Well, hello again. My name is Paul from Ski Instructor Academy, and I am with Andy from Snow Camps Europe. How are you doing, Andy? I'm good. Have we press record? <laughs> we press record. The discs are mixed. We're in business. Good stuff. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so today we've got an interesting one leading through a sequence of um, podcasts. We're starting with um, discussing ski touring. What's the thing? And especially because of COVID, it's like, it's like shot up around Europe, the interest in ski touring and what we mean by that. And we'll lead on to um, different types of uh, ski touring and also discuss then um, a lot about avalanche awareness and, and et cetera as well. Yeah, cool. I suppose um, for me, this was my first winter ski touring and it was because of COVID. The ski areas got closed and therefore the lifts weren't running. And I went out and bought a set um, because a lot of the shops was the only way that they could make money was by selling ski touring gear. And every man and his dog was buying a ski touring set. Um, and... Uh, it was some cracking deals, wasn't oh, it? Unreal. Six hundred, I think, six hundred and ninety-nine for a pair of Hagen skis, skins, Fisher boots, poles and as well. Not, not poles, no, um, and bindings, Dynafit bindings. Um, which, if I'd bought everything separately, the boots alone would have cost what the set cost. Yeah. So heavily, heavily discounted. I think it was something like forty-eight, forty-eight percent discount, something like that. Mm. But. Um, I, I I say I did that because I wanted to still be able to ski, and I thought, right, I'll give it a go. So I'm not talking. I went on peak to peak tours. This was very much in ski resort, relatively safe, um, walking up alongside the piste and then skiing down an unprepared piste, or on some days a prepared piste that had then been snowed on with a bit of powder, which was quite good. Um, but where I was taking my time to walk up, you take it slightly differently, didn't you? Always to the extremes. Yeah, I mean, in, in, in comparison, when we talk about different types of touring, obviously here we're talking and, and we, you know, people shouldn't switch up and think, oh, that's something I'm not interested in because actually you'd be surprised. So many people do ski touring in in within this restraints of the ski resort itself. Mm -hmm. So they will ski either up the piste Oh, I'm saying skin, walk, or skin up. up the piste, yeah. or just next to it. It's getting a bit controversial. We'll come on to that topic as well. But basically what you're talking about, Andy, is in the actual ski resort area, walking up or alongside the piste, and then touch it, ski back down. Yep. What is ski touring in essence then, Andy? I mean, what, what is the equipment that people need for this? And is it something that's not in the reach of a recreational skier? No, I think it's well within reach of any skier. And what surprised me was there are a lot of people out there ski touring in a resort area who can't actually ski that well down. No. Now, also, the equipment doesn't aid in nice skiing down. Um, I found, because it is very light, which is good for the up, it's dreadful for the down. Um, they're not as stiff, they're very um, unstable, and the boots are a lot softer. But you can still get down. Um, you might not just get down with as much finesse as you would normally on your alpine skis. But I think it's accessible for anybody who has got a basic skiing level um and again going back to what i was doing which was walking up one yes i was getting a good workout out of it but that mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily my aim my aim was to get out into the mountains on days where they were closed so walking up good workout have a little bite to eat when i got to the top obviously all of the huts were closed so i was taking some nuts and what with me bit of fruit have a drink have a little rest and then ski down so it was getting me out of the house now obviously there is there's that kind of ski touring just going out of an afternoon maybe you've been skiing in the morning anyway um then there's the extreme there's off the ex piste. yeah there's the extreme off piste i'm going on a, a a full day tour from peak to peak to ski some epic lines with a an element of possible danger and then there's as you kind of do it you do it for a workout so you will yeah we, we have ra yeah we have race kits so our kit's different um we wear race kit clothing which is very tight lined and it's a bit almost like cross country skiing you know mm -hmm. um, I'd say it's the next level down from the pain side of cross country skiing if you do cross country skiing properly that is um, we run up we basically go up at high speed or as quick as we can the skis are like 163 the bindings and the skis combined are barely 200 grams uh, as you say the cost is astronomical because it's all carbon the, the, the ski boots are carbon um, 
Um, so it's very, very light equipment. And you, it's it's obviously, a, it's something probably people don't know, but it's a competition here in, in Europe where mm-hmm. people do racing like this, where they'll run up all these peaks, ski down, go up another peak, ski down, go up another peak, ski down. And there's races like this across Austria. Um, and it's very much... Uh, an endurance sport you know it's very much like i don't know biking for example race biking so that yeah, sort of body type running. it's that type of yeah. body type you know um sparkle tars when we say like um <laughs> sparkle tars and is a, a matchstick like a matchstick man yeah. you know you need your matchstick man arms and stuff because you're just you're just running everywhere and it's you're pissing with sweat when you get to the top and um, so for example from the bottom of this mountain, local mountain here, to the the top of the mountain, it takes most people like a good speed, let's say a relatively fast speed, would be about one hour 20, one hour 25, Mm -hmm. would be, you know, relatively good to walk up it. We would go up in about 50 minutes, and some of these like proper matchsticks will do it in 35 or something Whoa. you know they'll be like literally just running up wow. um but of course like like biking it's 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 about your weight as well how much weight do you carry um and that makes a difference so now you've got like the nice pleasant tour yeah. you've got this extreme like racing up and then as andy says the other side of the coin is the slightly more um dangerous element where you're actually going on tours that are nowhere near anybody basically and you are just touring up a mountain and we'll talk about those tours in depth more lately when we discuss um about some of the avalanches that i've personally been in because then we can relate to that but here we're going to stick very much to the beginner element of it and explain to people on a like a six seven day holiday that they could during their holiday basically switch their equipment yep into ski touring equipment and a lot of resorts will have at least one night of the week where you're permitted to go and ski tour up to a hut Mm -hmm. which is such a nice thing to do yeah so you finish your day skiing switch your kit over and then probably start around about 4 35 is when the evening tour is allowed to start and as paul said you can you can start walking up follow the crowd you don't you could have a teacher, an instructor, or somebody with experience with you to show you how it works, but it is pretty simple. Um, the equipment makes it quite easy, and once they've shown you in the shop how the equipment works, I'm sure anyone with a little bit of skin knowledge wouldn't have a problem. Um, the issues are, as people should be aware, is those skins, so how it works is it's a, it's a loose binding yeah. that, that basically it's an alpine binding that allows the heel to come off and then when you're at the top of the mountain you can click the heel back down it becomes then an alpine binding in effect now the other part is the skin which is thousands and thousands of hairs on this skin that basically allowed it to slide forward but it won't slide back Mm -hmm. now that said (laughs) you need good technique if you're on steep terrain doing it or it's a bit icy and smooth if you're just going up like a blue piece, you're fine. You're not going to have that slipping back action that you get sometimes if you're going up a steep red or a black. And, you know, I have on many occasions tumbled all the way back down a slope that I've carefully <laughs> plotted my way up and then the skin slips and it's like, oh God, disaster. Um, and it's quite embarrassing. There's the other side of that with the skins and I will put a little bit of video in, in this podcast so you can see, but there are times where you're walking up and then you need to slide down slightly to walk up the next bit. Oh, yes. And um, what you have to remember is that when you're sliding on skins, which they don't recommend doing, but you inevitably do it. Yeah, because you can't be able to you take them off. You should not lean forward or bend your knees like you would on alpine skis because the minute the skins grip again, <laughs> you're, he- you're head first into the snow, which you'll see on this bit yeah. of video. Andy's um, basically saying that you go over a lip sometimes and you might have to slide down yeah. two or three metres and you're not going to take the skin off and all that for no. the sake. You're just going to slide on the skin. Yeah. But as you say, your heel's not now attached no. and the minute you move slightly forward and the skis suddenly slow down. Yeah. And th- this just shows my inexperience in touring. And as we said, I started at the beginning of this last winter because of COVID and um, I didn't get anybody to teach me how to do it. We just went off and did it and learned by error. And here, this was a fantastic error. error. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think, yeah, it's, it's accessible for pretty much anyone and everyone. And um, 
it once you've started on that night tour, if you're going to go walk, walk let's say, or put the mice go Glinka Prun, you don't have to go all the way to the top because no. all of the huts on that night are open. So you can do a 30 minute tour up, you can have your dinner and then ski down. Or if you want to do that one hour 90 to the very top, then you can do the one hour 90. All depends, again, how tired you are from your day skiing and also your fitness level because it is a good workout. It's, oh, it's a hell of a workout. Yeah. And especially, you know, you. Yeah, if if you're not used to it, you know, we've been with people, um, we have a lo- little local mountain as well, Thomas Bath, for example, that just does ski yep. touring to the Einzian Hutte. Yep. And, um, you know, I've been there with a, a couple of uh, Jamie's clients and stuff, and it's only, I think it's only about 550 metres difference or something, you know, but they've died, like literally died mm. walking up it. It's not as easy as it looks if it gets slightly steep. But the, the key thing is just go at your own pace. Um, you need to go relatively slow at first and just enjoy the environment. Usually, like you say, you can go through some woods and yep. the moon's out, for example. It's we, quite cool. We did a nice one. It was in daytime. It had snowed the night before. There was probably half a meter of fresh powder and we we started in a mid station and then we, we went through the woods all the way to the top of a mountain. And um, fantastic scenery. Breaking a trail through fresh powder is an experience in itself. Um, and then we managed to ski down. So the pistes had been prepared the day before and then it had snowed half a metre. So you Perfect. were skiing down yeah. a powdered piste, which was absolutely brilliant. Um, I like the, the the one that you just mentioned there with the Enzian hut over in Thomasback. What's quite nice about that is uh, that's you, you go through a forest in the yeah. evening, but then yeah. you ski down what used to be an old piste, don't you? Yeah. Is that the route yeah. down? So that's quite, it's, that's very accessible for an inexperienced tour, I would absolutely. say. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So don't think it's something when you hear the word ski touring that it's out of your reach. Even as a relatively new skier, two, three week skier, you can definitely ski tour when you find um, these places in the resort. It doesn't matter where you are. I mean, here in Salbach, Zellemsee, Capron, every one of them has a night that allows you to do that. Now, what you don't want to be doing is doing it on a night where the, you know, when the ski resort shuts at 4.30, mm-hmm. do not go up after that because the piston bullies are operating up there and there's been some horrendous accidents with the winches and stuff yeah, like people, that. If you, if, if you ski into a piston bully winch at an average speed, then you're probably sliced in half or your, your yeah. head's going to be taken off. So definitely do not go ski touring of a night time in a ski resort area when the peace and bullies are out. And it has become a little bit political because it got so popular over the last five years. It's really shot up in its popularity. Some ski resorts did put a stop and say that people aren't allowed to actually tour up during the day when the resort's open, for example. Um, they tried that in a few resorts, even here and all that, and there was such a backlash from the locals that they had to actually open it back up but you understand it from the perspective of the ski uh, company because they look at it and think well they're not buying a lift past many of these people they're basically using the piece to to, to walk up which, the, yeah which is fine for the huts because they get yeah. the business at least they go to the huts yeah. but of course it's a big loss to the ski companies if people aren't paying and i always said well why not just pay like two euros at the bottom or something you know like uh, just a service thing it's funny because at the vert town where i was most of last winter and where i did quite a bit of touring um you have to actually pay oh you pay a yeah, few euros uh, do yeah you? you pay well you pay i think it's 10 euros if, Ooh, you, if wow. you just want to go up the valley um run so you walk and there is a there is a designated track that you go up ah, next, right, okay. next to the piste you have to buy a ticket they check your lift ticket as, as you would be getting on a lift almost you can walk up that gets you to the midpoint and then you can ski back down that's 10 euros then they have like a 15 euro which is you can go up you can ski a run use a lift and then ah, ski back right, down clever, yeah. and then they have also if you can buy you can buy a season ticket now which is just a, a alpine skiing season ticket or it's a combined touring ticket which means you can tour up and use all of the the lifts at the same time but it's funny because they, they've they've been doing this now for about three or four years and so they cottoned on to the the yeah, finances in it literally the number of people who are touring on this yeah this alm it's it's not a mountain it's an alm um is phenomenal and they've gone right we're going to start charging now it kicked off big time when they brought it, it in it kicked off however people got used to it and now they're happy to pay it um, because, I think because there's a service there. Yeah, well, yeah, but you're getting a prepared track to walk up yeah. and you're getting a prepared piece to ski down. Yeah. And that's in the daytime and then in the nighttime, you know that, it, again, it's designated for night touring. So it's there's a safety element 
the huts are open to service you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, what you do get some people doing is they don't drive into the car park and go through the main entrance. They will park on the pass right. and they'll come through the woods and they'll try and dodge the ten euro charge. But there's always going to be someone who jumps the jumps That's the handy. fence. <laughs> <laughs> So don't be put off, because we're going to go into the ski touring subject a bit more in the next few podcasts, so don't be put off, follow them, because it's going to have some interesting subjects to do with snow, snow types, and, and etc. around Europe about avalanches as well. Yeah. All good? Yes. See you in the next one. Give it a go. Bye for now.